I'm calling this peeking at papers. And when, when I talk about papers, I'm talking about research papers. If you do do research, I suggest you skip videos because you may have a little heart failure. And if you hear how simply I'm boiling this stuff down, I want to remove all the statistics, all the complicated stuff. All I want to do is talk to you about the concept that these researchers were looking at and I find them fascinating. So if you've never looked at papers, if oh, it's intimidating, because I definitely found them a little scary and I didn't look at them. Let's take a look at this one. Give me a chance. And I think you're going to find this really, really fascinating and slightly amusing because I certainly did. This one is about auditors being narcissistic, clients being narcissistic, and whether or not this impacts the audit. So we're looking at narcissism, like a personality trait and whether or not this impacts the audit, which is, I think is, I think is really, really interesting. Okay. So when we're studying auditing, part of what we study is the code of conduct, right? And we go, okay, if the auditor is friends with the client, then maybe their risk assessment or the way that they do the audit will be impacted because, um, you know, you're more likely to say, oh, my friend would never commit fraud and therefore their professional judgment might be impaired. Fine. This is basically saying, what if, the auditor is a bit of a narcissist. And what if the client is a bit of a narcissist? Would this impact the audit? So it's not about their relationship. It's about the fact that the two of us may be narcissists. So first off, like what is narcissism that they're talking about here? I think they explain it quite nicely, which they say narcissism can be seen as grandiose self-importance. And we know these types of people, right? A lack of empathy nobody else's opinion, nobody else's feelings matter. I don't never think about anybody other than myself. An excessive need for admiration. Everybody must think I'm amazing. Everybody must love me. Um, an attitude of superiority and entitlement. I'm better than everyone else. I'm smarter than everyone else. And I deserve to be the center of attention and the best of everything. So that's what we're talking about narcissism. So why would this impact the audit? The first thing they say, previous research kind of says that narcissistic CFOs are often associated with low financial reporting quality. So the financial statements are generally not so good. In aggressive accounting and financial fraud. So just because they're narcissistic, CEOs and CFOs are more likely to have misstated financial statements. It kind of makes sense. Someone who has an overinflated sense of themselves is more likely to make mistakes and not do things properly because they don't check things up. I don't have to check. I'm not going to ask for help. I'm not going to ask anyone. I know everything. And they may be more likely to commit fraud because they deserve the best of everything. And they can justify why whatever they're doing is fine because it's for me. Like, I don't understand why you have a problem with this. Like, this is, you know, what does the auditor's personality have to do with this? What they were trying to do in this paper is say, look, let's say the CFO is a narcissist and you have two auditors. If the one auditor is a narcissist and the other auditor isn't, would their risk assessment be different because of the narcissism? And what they found is that it was. You have two auditors and the one's a narcissist and the one's not a narcissist, you're going to have a different risk assessment. Okay, why? Very much for the same reasons. An auditor who's a narcissist tends to overestimate their own ability. Again, they're kind of like, what I do is right and it's right because I'm doing it. They talk about it as relying on the memory of evidence. So like, I'm sure I did that and I did go and check that and it was fine. Well, yeah, instead of actually going back and checking it. And there's also an impact of two narcissists coming together. They talk about it as a narcissism tolerance, which is um, if I'm a narcissist and you're a narcissist, then unconsciously we see a similarity in our personalities. And as human beings, we are more likely to, to like people that are similar to us. So we see someone else as a narcissist and there's a sense of like, oh, we're same, same, we're good, I'm good, so you're good, you're good, so I'm good, and we're all good, and so we're good. So a narcissistic auditor is more likely to assess the risk of misstatement as lower because they're both narcissists. Whereas an auditor who's not a narcissist they, they don't have the same level of tolerance and they're more likely to see the things that they say as flags and triggers and warning. For us as auditors, it's fascinating because when you're studying, all you think about is, uh, you know, I must think of the technical details of the financials and this and, you know, all these like fraud indicators and all these financial indicators and everything. But what we're saying here is, do I need to think about whether or not me as an auditor or if I'm the audit partner, if the people on my audit team are narcissists, then that would change the way they do the job. That's a bit weird. So someone's like, do you want to do personality tests on your staff now? Because you want to know, 
oh, well, you know, my audit manager is giving me the risk assessment, but actually he's a bit of a narcissist. And so they're like, very weird. I'm sure you can imagine. And should we be doing some kind of personality tests on our clients to see whether or not they're narcissists so we can go, oh, okay, you're a narcissist. And so they... And the idea that we're looking at narcissism in terms of financial statement, fair presentation of financial statements, I think is hysterical. Very quickly how they did this was they set up a simulated environment where they had like an actor play the role of a CFO and give out classic verbal and non-verbal cues of narcissism. So they set them up in this like fancy looking office with like big pictures of themselves and awards on the wall and stuff that is generally accepted to be narcissistic traits. Um, and then they gave them a script that kind of came across as these are the types of things that narcissists would say in these meetings. So they, they created a simulated environment and they measured narcissistic traits using like a very common, there's a common measurement or there's a common little test that you can do to identify certain narcissistic factors. So I'm not really too worried about how they did it. And, you know, obviously you can go take a look further if you want. Uh, but I thought that the topic, the concept of what they were testing I thought was really funny. If you do take a look at the paper, you'll see that they also talk about something called moral disengagement in this paper. That was kind of like a separate thing that they were looking at in this paper. So I haven't really spoken about it here, but if you do look at it, you'll see that pop out. That was like something else that they looked at as well. But what I'm interested in, you, know, you have a CFO who's a narcissist, you have two auditors. If the one's a narcissist and the other's a nar not a narcissist, does that impact the risk assessment? Can you imagine putting that on your exams? <laughs> You know, as like fraud risk indicators. <laughs> well, can you imagine putting it in your audit file as like fraud risk indicator? I think the CFO is a bit of a narcissist. And so therefore, I think that um, there may be fraud in the financial statements. I think that's hysterical. What I leave this with is when we think of risk assessment and, you know, when, when I teach risk assessment, when I think of risk assessment, we always focus on the technical stuff, you know, but in reality, there's so much more that might impact the work that we do. Um, you know, personality traits, for example. That was the paper that I wanted to peek at today. I think it's fascinating. And so I thought I'd share it with you.